control. Yeah, we're going to be breaking down UFC 281 for everybody. We're going to get the pros to say what they think about this main event because Alex Correa has only had three fights. Now he's got the title. Everyone's saying he won those last two fights. But if you've watched the last two fights outside of mixed martial arts in kickboxing for Israel Adesanya, man, that first fight was really close and he was winning the second fight as well. So we're going to be getting into that uh, in just a little bit here. I got to say, though, congratulations to Kane. Free Kane. But here's the thing, Steve. For I the know, court I know document. I know this is coming. For the court document, bro, it says he has to stay 300 yards away from the victims of this case. Now, he spent eight months in jail. He comes out. Luckily, they changed the judges. And now he has to stay away from the victims of this case. If I was in that general area, bro, and wasn't Kane and knew what was going on, as the public, like, I would kind of take that into my own hands, bro. Like, in 8 Mile, they burn the house down. I would do something like that, man. Like, it's absolutely out of control how these people are out there still living. But Kane's back home doing his thing. And the crazy thing I found out about Kane, man, he's been tripping out lately doing ayahuasca before he went to jail and stuff, which, dude, I've never done that stuff in my entire life. Jim Morrison used to do it, but the pitcher Kane doing it, you hear Mike Tyson doing it, Henry Cejudo. Like, what's this whole thing with everybody tripping out lately? Have you realized that? People are talking yeah, about people, pe people are, tr are, are, are are trying to do the Marvel thing and break 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 the fourth wall. You know what I mean? They're they're trying to enlighten their souls, man. Why 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 everyone hating on on the athletes that uh, you know you know taking ass? No 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 no. You know if I remember correctly, there's a there's a famous pitcher for that threw a no hitter on acid, right? Right. <laughs> What's that? We got our our guest coming in. Right now, we, we should definitely ask her about this for uh, sure. Yeah, yeah let's we welcome. Let's get things kicked off with uh with our our first guest uh, uh of the evening uh, uh, of the night. We got Audra <laughs> Cummings. Cummings. Hey. The FC fighter is here. Welcome, Audrea, to Combat Deviants. Appreciate the the time that the, this evening. Ha hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you say anything, are you sure? You're a BKFC fighter. You don't got a shaved head. You don't got pink oh hair. You don't got God. tattoos. And I don't uh, have an OnlyFans page. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was about to go right around the corner. Oh my Listen, goodness! Uh, it, it is sad. Like, like, like we're getting to the point where, like, like no, no disrespect to BKFC or anything like that, but they have a type in anymore when it when it comes to uh, girls. They like to sign girls. They like to promote anymore. Is, is that that kind of the feel you you get uh, when you're looking at it? You know, um, I, well, first of all, I think it just attracts a certain personality type. But as you pointed out, um, I don't look like the typical BKFC fighter or any fighter at all. Really, I mean, I have normal colored hair. I, I'm not covered in tattoos. I'm not 22 years old. Um, I don't show my ass a whole lot. I'm a 42-year-old mom of four. I'm living a life in the suburbs. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, you don't, you don't look like you're, you're that age whatsoever. And, you. you know, as a journalist, I did a lot of research on you. And I got to say, four children, right? At 40 yes. years old, you kind of just... Got a call from a man named Eric Graham. Now, who, who's Eric Graham and uh, how did he get your number and how did Nate Shook get your number? Okay, so my whole like fighting story starts with Eric Graham, actually. So I was on Facebook and I'm a personal trainer and I'm also a certified nutritionist and I was posting all the time, going live all the time. Excuse me. <clears throat> Um, no, not the kids too much. <laughs> yeah, actually, that did just happen. So. <laughs> um, and he and I connected just through fitness. And he offered me a job or an opportunity at the gym. He said, hey, you think you'd want to do some strength and conditioning and classes and things here? And I said, that sounds really cool. I drive by all the time. I look through the window. I see everybody doing their thing. I was like, it's so intimidating, but it looks neat. So I got a personal invite to come and check the gym out. And um, once we met and we got started, I started teaching classes there. Now I'm the uh, the head kids coach for the five to eight year olds on kickboxing and jujitsu. Um, he has trained me. I take uh, the cardio kickboxing. I make fight classes when I can, but I coach a boot camp on Monday and Wednesday night. What for, uh, Maury, or uh, you know, straightening kids' lives out over there, getting in their face, screaming at them and stuff. Well, it's. <laughs> 
they, I do yell at them and they love it. That's one of their favorite parts. But I yell cool stuff, you know, not like mean, like awful stuff. I yell, you know, things like, uh, what are you made of? You know, this is your chance to see what you're made of. Don't quit now. You can do anything for the next 20 seconds. Let's go. You're almost there. So, so you're like really... the Ken Shamrock over there. I mean, yeah. like, do you, did you, I don't mean to cut this off, but I think it's really important before you go on with explaining this part of the story. Did you, were you familiar with mixed martial arts? Did you ever watch um, yeah. any events? Like how familiar were you? Growing up, you know, I had taken Taekwondo and I had taken kickboxing and I had okay. done that as a kid. Of course you watch all the movies. It's always been an interest of mine. Um, I like to, I like to wrestle. So, <laughs> um, so oh, I thought. Oh, oh, when you say cool. wrestle, you mean beating the kids up all the time and trying uh, to separate this before, them. Kids. this was a long time ago <laughs> oh you had um, the wwf dolls like i did throw them around the yeah, living room yes <laughs> so i grew up on andre the giant and i lived near hulk hogan so i would see him in real life Whoa. In the Tampa area stop stop um, you, we're gonna have to backpedal you just, even you just more have to the hogan drop up it's over and Eddie, Eddie, eddie's gonna <laughs> fanboy you out <laughs> yeah well, you grew you kind of look like you might be one of hogan's daughters or something like <laughs> What's her name? Brooke? Like, did, did you know the family? I think the son no, passed away, actually. They were, um, they were, they lived closer to the beach and I lived more in the country. And so, so if, when we wrestle in the country, you know, you wrestle with your neighbors and your cousins and, you know, you, you're just tussling in the yard. You're, I, I grew up with a family that kicked you out and you weren't allowed to come home until they either called for you or the streetlights came on. Yeah. And so, you know, you just, you're in the yard. What do you do? <laughs> But like, was it a huge thing? Like Hulk Hogan lives in the, like, I'm from New Haven. There's a bunch of uh, boxers from here. There's uh, the not, uh, Jada Kiss is from over here. So, but we don't make like a big deal. 50 Cent no, lives in Connecticut. We don't really give a fuck, you know? So no, he's just part of the community. It's not a big deal. Watch him on TV, cheer for him, you know? Uh, I heard a rumor though from my grandfather, may he rest in peace. And I used to love this story as a kid. So he went to a McDonald's one morning and he saw Hulk Hogan walking into McDonald's with his wife, didn't hold the door for her and walked in. And my grandfather was so taken back by that. Is Hogan kind of like that kind of a person you think? You know, I never witnessed one way or the other. He always seemed real cool and real cordial in public. I mean, I, I only ran into him a handful of times and I was a kid, so it's not like I was watching out for that kind of stuff. He yeah, seemed fucking nice. Hogan's not opening Great. doors for anyone around but, here. <laughs> oh, if I had no, but my grandfather taught me how, how a man's supposed to treat a woman. So I, that would have appalled me if I saw that. So going forward, you did Taekwondo training and things like this, but you never really considered getting into it. So how did this really unravel here? Like, I know BKFC does like tryouts and stuff. Did you yeah. do a tryout? So I did. So after I started at Graham MMA, I, I did run, I did start, so I'm already a personal trainer and I started strength and conditioning classes for fighters. I had two that signed up. We started a little 5 a.m. gang. And we actually got in the best shape of our lives. We had ripped abs. We were eating right. We were, uh, they turned me on to the Dolce diet, which I got a cool story about that. I got oh. to have a one-on-one -on -one with Mike Dolce. This week. Um, Ultimate which, fighter rest. Wow. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. Um, and then like, as things grow, the interest grew, the love for it grew. Um, and I wouldn't say that like, I'm just like hardcore gonna be a fighter obsessed over it. There's really people at the gym that that's that's what they eat, breathe, sleep. They're there three times a day. I'm there you know, like for my hour, my two hours, and then I'm living my life with my kids. So I'm not as hardcore as some other people are. Um, if my schedule allows for it, it'd be cool, but it doesn't. And I yeah. like it to be a part of my life. I don't like it to be my life. I don't hmm. identify myself through fighting or training. Um, but as it started to progress, I mean, just the natural flow of things started to happen. And um, I never really wanted to be an MMA fighter. And I actually used to turn my head at UFC fights when, like, the blood really? would start. I'm like, oh, God, I can't watch it. Yeah, I don't. But I now don't you're fighting with Hulk clubs. And, we'll, and we'll, we'll get there. That's an interesting fact right there. Yeah, so it used to, like, turn me off. But uh, one of my friends took me to a bare knuckle fight when they first came to Mississippi. And that was the... Um, that was the Christine Faria Helen Peralta fight in Biloxi. We just and had Helen on the it, show, yeah. And we have really good seats, right, close up to the 
the squared circle and I just, I watched it and something like hit me right away. I was like, oh, that's the thing I can do. Like, that's the one I want to do. I don't know. Like it just struck me sitting there watching it. It was that's awesome. special. That's really special for a lot of people out there who don't know when it's going to happen. Like out of high school, you're like, what do I do with my life? Here you are at 40 years old and it struck you like, oh, this, wow, this could be my calling and and, and look at you now. So you were, you were interested in it and then what you actually pursued it. Were you talking about it like to people or did you kind of keep it a secret? Like I'm going to try out for this. I talked the- about it to my best friend at the time a whole, whole lot. Um, but he was a fighter too. And so he was really interested in it, but he was more the fighter. So it was more like I was in the support role. And so I kind of helped him and pushed him. And I was like, well, you know what? I'll act as a manager. I'll start making contacts in bare knuckle. We'll start to get to know everybody. And of course the fight world is actually kind of as big as it is. It's still a very small world. Audra and- Ali Abdelaziz. <laughs> Audra <laughs> Abdelaziz over there. So I started making connections. Um, actually, the one of the first people I met, and we are friends today, uh, is Britton Hart or Britton Beltran. We um, just had her husband on. <laughs> okay. So I saw her, and we were waiting after the fights. We were just milling about or whatever, and I didn't know who she was yet. And so I just I saw her just doing like this. She was real cute, and she I think she was commentating that night. But I didn't know anything about her or or the uh, the people, the fighters yet. And I and I just saw her doing like this, and I walked up to her and I was like, "You got the bug, don't you?" <laughs> she was like, "Oh yeah." She was. I wish it was me in there tonight. And we just started talking. And um, her fight with Paige Van Zant, we had been talking as friends. She's so nice. She's one of the greatest people. And we had been talking as friends up to that point when she went to go fight page i was like well do you need anything can i help you with anything and she said the l- one last thing she needed was her shoes boxing shoes so i, I bought her her shoes and she wore the oh, shoes wow. i sent her in the page man's ant fight oh, uh, something funny really quick i know steve's got a question waiting for you but when i was doing my research for you I got three photos of you and a hundred of Paige Van Zant. Like people are mixing you and Paige up. It looks oh, like really? on Google. <laughs> I haven't it's, seen that yet. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Google, Google is a weird place, man. I promise you. It it is a weird place. But but to fast forward and, and after a year or so of making connections and working the scene and supporting my friends who wanted to do it and who got in, um, tryouts happened to be in my hometown of Plant City, Florida. And I was like, okay this is too weird like how are they of all places plant city that seems really random to me i was like i gotta go i gotta go i was just in plant city the weekend before i live in mississippi so i had driven down the weekend before came back home i was like i'm driving back i'm going and so that's what i did i drove back i tried out um nate shook david feldman were there and um so let me stop you here How did, how did, how did you feel around all these professionals? Did you feel like you fit in? Did you feel like you did well? Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't ever worry about whether I fit in or not. That's never a thing. It's just like, I'm going to come and make my mark and I either belong or I don't. And we'll go from there. I mean, Um, like skill wise, skill wise. I felt great. I felt great. You had to do like 11 minutes of shadow boxing and so many minutes of mitt work and so many rounds of bag work as they were all walking around watching. You had to do like the, the punchometer to see how hard you can punch. And I just went to have fun. So like this whole thing, it's not like, I mean, like you said, I'm in my forties. I have four kids. Three of them are really little. So I'm not trying to like be some big fighting superstar mega career. I'm here for the fun. I'm here to see what I'm made of. I'm, I'm here to show other people do whatever you want. Like, don't, don't put yourself in a box by age or station in life or whether you're a mom or have kids or whatever it is you're doing. If you got a crazy idea and it just seems fun to you, just freaking do it. And I, that's what I hope I'm representing for everybody. You, you definitely are. I mean, it's, it's really crazy for somebody to be 40 years old. Steve, what, what are your thoughts? We don't usually see this in combat sports. I mean, yeah, it's not something you really see in combat sports, but it's not like something that's completely odd anymore. I mean, we're, 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 we're like, I mean, obviously we're in this day and age where, you know, for the past month we were talking about Anderson Silva, 47 years old, you know, even partaking in, in a boxing match. So it's not really this odd thing where where co- combat sports athletes, you know, blooming, uh, you know, later in life. It, it, and in some sense, it's kind of better off in some sense because I because it's something me and Eddie t- 
that talk about off air is is sometimes as you're older you're you know and you've been in the game and been involved in athletics and things and like your mind is is at a at a, at a i think a, a higher iq level when you're later in life you're able to kind of process things when you're younger and things come at you it's more re reactatory and it's not like you're you're, you're just doing it all off of your your skill alone when you get older it's more you, you things slow down for you a little bit easier for, than it would when, when you know you're you know 21 25 30. Yeah, and there, I mean, and there is a generation, like, I'm the oldest person at my gym, you know what I mean? Like, I'm there, but everyone there is so cool. It doesn't feel, age is not a thing when you're in the gym. Age is not a thing when you're training. We're all there with the similar goals and the same sort of, like, animal inside of us. Um, and honestly, I think we're all kind of there because we got something going on deep inside. And this is, like, one way we know how to work it out. And whether we have differences or agreeances, you know, agree or whatever you know we just all go in there and just get that beast out really so you were wait like after the tryouts right you're waiting by your phone waiting 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 oh waiting forever how waiting stressful forever. was that did you like at some point did were you just like oh well they told us i i, I want to say they said we'll be in contact within like 10 to 14 days or something and so I was like, okay, I'm waiting. Well, by then I already had everyone's phone number because I had already been working the management side of things for my friend. And so after like two weeks went by, I was like, hey, you know, I'm <laughs> hey. Well, hold on, let me stop you. Let me stop you. Are, are you usually like the kind of girl, like say for when you were younger, you, you see a cute guy, you get his number. Like what's the general rule on waiting? Like, are you supposed to be the first one to reach out if they don't oh, talk to you? I or ever hit on a guy ever in my life i've never been the aggressor i never go after anybody i'm like if they want me they'll come you know same like here it's it's so it's weird too because like you feel it like you want to it's like that that song by james bond i saw you on a train or whatever it was <laughs> uh and it's like i never had that in me where it was like i don't know if it's because i was raised by like a single mother where i showed too much respect i see too many guys out there treating women just absolutely awful at parties and stuff. I never wanted to be that kind of person. So in relationships growing up, even for my first kiss, it was like, I was so nervous. And even to this day, like I'm still somebody that I don't like making the first move. I feel very uncomfortable. I don't want people to feel like, like awkward about it. But yet girls say to me, like, why? Like they get offended. They're like, why aren't you making a move? And it's like, it's, it's like the, I'm trying to be polite. I'm trying to be a gentleman. Like you do something, but then it's like, it never left me, you know, like it, but it's you just not want a really aggressive forward girl. You might want one of those polite girls. That's kind of waiting on you. I don't know. I know. Look at me. I deal with <laughs> a lot of like punk rock girls. It's crazy because I'm 33. Right. Okay. Um, in seven years, I'm going to be 40. So it's like, what am I going to do? Like, that's so much time. You don't is it? Is it? Because I'm getting so a little stressed out. So much can happen in a year. I mean, so so like, look at this time frame. I didn't hear back from Nate Shook in the 14 day time frame, right? 14 days. Wow. So I started like, hello, hello, hello. I'm here. You know, and then um, it's something I really wanted. So I did become a little more aggressive with it. Sending like um, Facebook waves and stuff at him. Like, hey. Yeah, like, I <laughs> Um, and one day I was leaving boot camp. I was headed back to the gym and I got a text on my phone that said, Hey, would you like to fight on such and such date? And I thought it was for my friend that I was like, me, like managing at the time. And I, and I was headed to the gym. I was like, well, I'll see him when I get there and I'll ask him about it. I reread it at the stop sign. And I was like, <laughs> is this for me? Yeah. He was like, no, it's for so-and-so. Yes, it's for you. Do you want to fight? <laughs> So was what like, was that moment like? What? Yeah, like that. <laughs> yeah. I was in my car. Oh my God. I got to the gym. I ran through the gym. Everyone's watching me like, what is wrong? They knew. They knew immediately when they saw me running in. At what point did it kick in? Like, were, was there any anxieties kicking in or was it just like straight excitement? It was straight excitement because I think I was just too ignorant to know better. <laughs> But even like when you stepped in there, like how were you just as excited? Well, so my first scheduled fight was supposed to be with Randine Willoughby. I think I don't I don't I think that's the name she goes by. And so we got 
or I thought I signed my part of the contract, started to get really super pumped about it. I knew I had a lot of work to do because I had never had a fight before. This was going to be a big deal. You don't wear gloves. It, um, I had trained, but I wasn't like an aggressive, like I'm a fighter trainer. I was like, I got a lot to get done in the next eight to 10 weeks. Well, she, um, she had never signed the contract. I messaged her, Hey, let's fight. Let's do this. Where are you? Why aren't you coming? You know? And she just, she didn't want to. Um, and then, so that was devastating. That was devastating when that, when I realized we weren't actually going to fight, like I, I cried like a baby. But, so crazy and then got scheduled with crystal Pittman. that so that had a second scheduling and then the COVID thing took over and there was COVID drama with that and then got scheduled again and then that's when it it went down and i was not very nervous in the back i don't know why i think i'm in that mindset this is fun let's just see what happens what's the worst that can happen you get a bobo you get knocked down you know, what's the worst that can happen? You lose. I'm not scared of those things. So what does it matter? Let's just go and see how this goes. Like, I just wanted to see. And Eric Graham in the back was like, Audra, it's making me nervous. You're not more nervous. Like, he said that to me several times. <laughs> like, I'm a stone cold killer, coach. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. I, didn't, I was just like, I'm just ready for the experience. Um. And it ended up being a really good time. And of course I lost the points, but I went all five rounds. I took some tough shots over and over. I made up all the newbie mistakes, of course, but I, this was my one thing. I was like, look, when I go out there, I know I'm not the best of the best. I know I need so much more training. I just don't want to look like an asshole. If I lose fine, I just don't want to look like an asshole losing. And I don't think that I looked like an asshole. We got a standing ovation. It was a ton of fun. I was on cloud nine. That was back in January. And here we are again. And now that I know, and I'm working with this, uh, a specific boxing coach, Joshua Brown. He's amazing. Um, I, I knew what to train for. I knew what to, I needed to feel. I knew what kind of effort I needed to put in. I knew what to visualize this time. And it's just going to be, a, it's going to be a totally different fight. Like, like now, like really excited. <laughs> now, now, obviously, you know, you know, the, you're, you're you're on a pretty big card. You got you got uh what uh you got Houston Alexander and and uh and, and Mr. Beltran headlining the uh the Omaha Nebraska card. Are you gonna who who are you rooting for that one? You know, oh, I think shit. uh you know we we just, we literally just had both of them on. You know, love both both guys, both both the you know. Their UFC runs, Bellator, Bellator runs. Obviously, you know uh, Joey's basically he's he's the OG of of, of BKFC at this yeah. point in time. So, um, you know, who, who are you feeling here? I mean, obviously, Houston's on a two fight win streak. You know, it, it's almost looking like every time they come to to Omaha, he's like, "Hey, just put my name on the card." Yeah, and, he's such and, a and, he's such a. We were on the same podcast last night, and we got to play like a little hip hop knowledge game together and he's got like a doctorate in hip hop or something like well, dude, he's a dj he's he's awesome dude like like it, it, all i gotta say you know we just had him on there anybody who, who, who's who's in the Nebraska area and you're having an event make sure you reach out to houston mm -hmm. he is uh, he, he he he's a he's a he's a hip hop knowledge he's it's he's obviously you know, you know being a professional fighter he's gonna have some things he can he can talk about and do do some things with, with the crowd dude he's definitely somebody you want to bring in for an event yeah did you guys know he's 50 he's 50 years old so he, like, he looked like he just hit 40 if you really look at houston alexander he don't look like he's 50 years old no and he doesn't act like it and he was so awesome he was so nice but i know and love joey too and like this is the thing too like i love britain but i also love christine faria so when they had their fight i was Ooh. like Oh. I'm pulling my hair out. No, no, no. And and Britton Hart's mom, she is um amazing. Ah, uh, yes, yes. She, 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 so this is sweet heart. She, she's she's <laughs> one of a kind in the combat sports world. With, has, with with combat sports mom, it, it, it's definitely her. Um, Michelle Tate, Misha Tate's mom's definitely really high up on my list. Khalil there. Roundtree's mom, mom, shut up. <laughs> well, I connected with Monica because she reached out to me um, after she's so supportive. She heard like my mom hates this. Like she hates that I do this. And she after my fight with Crystal, I went home 
for the weekend and um my bruises were healed thank goodness because she would have freaked out but she held her phone to my face and it was a still shot of crystal like this and me like you know she's look at this <laughs> i was like so what mom i hit her too it's fine we're not doing <laughs> Yo, what is this a bad report card Come you should on, be like mom. wait a second mom what about <laughs> this one <laughs> yeah look at the other girls how about how about five dollars a month for only fans mom not doing that how about <laughs> I haven't <laughs> shaved my head or have a face tattoo, Ma. <laughs> yeah, so she offered, so Monica offered to talk to my mom. She's like, look, I'm a mom. I'll, I'll talk to your mom. And I was like, that is the greatest offer ever, but you don't know my mom. Like, <laughs> you don't know my mom. <laughs> yeah. I think you do, but you don't know her. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so man. That... Your mom went one of the ones that would jump o o over the barrier and be like, you're hitting my child. No one told That's me. What Friends. You're yeah. like, Mom, I'm a, a grown woman with four children. Let me do what I want to do here. If I want to fight and talk about like, sex or anything like that, because I'm the child. Audrey, you're still the child. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. That's so, funny. So, when you say you're the, you're the, you're the, you're, you're the youngest. So, uh, I'm mom's only child. Oh, me too. I'm an only child too. So you're definitely extra protected. So has your has your mom like grown comfortable to it, or is she just appalled by it? He's like, no. So I have she just puts even, up with it, right? I have not even, I have coming up. She doesn't even know. Oh, really? <laughs> now only, she's gonna know. She has good. friends on Facebook that like watch me and then like will tell her what I'm up to. <laughs> you got that. spies on your facebook <laughs> and i'm like how did you know that because i didn't tell you that and then i'll see her friends like liking my stuff or whatever i'm like uh okay i know who ratted me out so <laughs> that's one of her friends told her about my posts my fight posts i don't think she knows she hasn't mentioned it <laughs> oh man that's crazy <laughs> it's crazy i can go into a ring and fight bare knuckle with a girl i don't know but i can't tell my mom stuff <laughs> Like, so for this whole thing, like, how, how does, like, uh, your your kids feel about? Oh, my kids are great. So my kids are in. I love it. Kickboxing. They're in the gym life. They play in the boxing ring with their other gym friends while I'm taking kickboxing classes and stuff like that. So they've been involved for, like, three or four years as well wow. from the jump. So uh, they love it. They came to my first fight. I really wanted them there. Some people didn't think that was a good idea, but I was like, well, they're around it. They've seen it. We've had the talk about, you know, hey, mommy's face might get messed up. It's okay. uh, that touches on, on a previous question me and Eddie had gone over is is bringing kids to big, you know, you know, you know, big, big prize fights uh, a, a, a no go. And I, I say it's 50 50. It's up to it's up to how you know, like, like you're a parent, you know how your child reacts to things. You know, you know the, the type of things that go on. You, there's a 50-50 chance that you're going to win the fight, fight and get knocked out. There's a chance that there's a 50-50 chance that you're going to win the fight and knock somebody out. However, I've... The way is, is that they see mommy out there trying something really hard, being really tough, and know they don't have to be scared of anything. And if they want to try something, they get, you know, knocked down figuratively or literally. You just get back up and you keep going and, and look at my mom. I hope it brings a sense of pride um and a feeling of safety and love and accomplishment you know the same message that i'm trying to send to everybody else out there don't worry about your age or station in life if you want to do it you got to work your ass off for it but you can yeah. do it. you know it's a lot of sacrifice but if you're willing to figure that out how to make that fit in your life and eliminate all excuses you can make it happen you know i always so say somebody's next in line for what you want to do why not you but you you say something really important there takes a lot of hard work a lot of dedication and like you know i see for a lot of journalists out there they'll get into it they'll be so happy but then when the work comes like you get burnt out you start losing the love for it um you got to really enjoy what you do Rejected, and well that's it i got rejected you know like like, hell no, nah. you ain't rejecting me. I will come back over and over and over again until you say, yes, you're not going to deny me. Or I mean, I'm going to text you after 14 days I, and we'll I, go from there. I will <laughs> all your Facebook posts and I will. That's how I ended up in a phone call with Mike Dolce. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, let's let's get to that. For, for people out there who don't know Mike Dolce, Steve, I mean, this is an absolute legend there. I would actually love to try some of his stuff on UFC Fight Pass for a while, they had some of his videos um, discussing 
his routine. So, He's, Steve, what's your fondest memory of him? I was just on the Ultimate tough. Fighter, right? Yeah, it has to be tough. Yeah. So, how did how did this unravel here? Did you were you familiar with who he was? Oh yeah, I've been doing Dolce Diet for several years, off and on. Um, I'm a That's Dolce a promo cut right there. <laughs> yeah, ten percent body fat with that dude. So yeah. what is it about? Like my mom's on a diet. She's doing the keto diet. Like I brought home pizza tonight. She was like, get that fucking shit on my face. You burn a hole in the couch and fuck, now I'm flooding the bathroom and shit. But yeah, how how does this, uh, how does it go? Like it, it, for people starting out, like what was it like for you? Like what specifically the diet is like? So like, first of all, it's a crap ton of food. And you're like, I got to eat all this. And I really, the whole first week was practicing just getting all that food down. It was just so much and, and, it, and it's counterintuitive, right? Because everyone you talk to thinks you have to starve yourself to lose weight. No, you gotta feed your body. Your body has its own trust system, right? Like but without your mind being involved. And if it doesn't trust you to nourish it, it hangs on to fat just in case it needs it. Even more for women as well, because right. yeah. So, so Mike Dolce takes that and he flips the bird and says, hey, we are going to stuff your guts. And then after the first week, so basically it's a tapering, it's a taper. So you start with like four eggs and peppers and spinach and all this stuff, right? And then the second week is three eggs, same amount of peppers. The, sec the third <laughs> week, only two eggs, the same amount of peppers. So basically it's a big plate of peppers with like eggs sprinkled on top. <laughs> what does the peppers do? Like it's thermic, you know, there's a thermic effect. There's uh, your body reacts and digests certain foods in different ways. Um, I talked to him specifically about eggs versus a protein shake at night. And he said, well, eggs are more thermic. It, it increases your meta you know, your metabolism as they digest. It builds the heat in the body. You burn more digesting it than you would a protein shake. And so that's the whole thing is what foods are thermic. Uh, so it's like an oat. It's actually oatmeal in the morning with berry eggs for lunch. That sounds delicious. Yeah, it, it, the Mike Dolce delicious diet. Uh, but basically, the only carbs that you ha are you're having on the Dolce diet is fruit because fruit is technically a carb. So you have a ton of fruit in the in the diet, and then you have um like a, a he calls it sumo stir fried chicken and asparagus and spinach at night. But it's the same thing for like three days, and then on the fourth day you might get salmon or you might get a salad. And then you go back to the same thing for three days, only the portions change. But by the end of the three, I mean, this is only three weeks. The Dolce Diner <laughs> diet. I, I mean, I, my abs are coming in right now, by the way. But <laughs> sick, like at the, you're just eating so much and you think you're just gonna be like, Boo. by the end of it, you're waking up like, looking really good. Like the liver king. <laughs> like the liver thing. You start growing a beard, getting all ripped, just start eating raw livers. That's I got 11% body fat, 122 pounds, something like that. This was just a few years ago. Um, and he asked me for that picture. He's like, did you take a picture? I was like, absolutely. He's like, will you send it to me? He said, will you send me your picture at your worst and your best so I can see? I said, yes, sir. I showed him the book of his that I have. He goes, wow, that book is worn out. You are definitely a Dolce girl. I was like, on it <laughs> so for people out there listening i think you said you start with four eggs then two and four, then just peppers yeah four eggs the first week three eggs the second week two eggs the third week uh but it's just it's a mat it's just a matter of wholesome proteins and carb all your macros and then you just taper down as the so week when you're when you're going through weight cutting and stuff, do you still follow along with this or? Absolutely, it's the perfect weight cut diet because it's 21 days and 20 pounds. I didn't have oh, wow. pounds to lose. That's why I got down so lean. Um, I think I only had to lose. I think I only lost like eight to ten pounds. That's all I had. But a woman at 11 percent body fat, that's unheard of. And doctors don't want females below 12 percent body fat. But it's okay because I was doing it athletically. Um, so they were okay with that. Plus, I was training twice a day, two, three times a day. And so it all goes together. You can't really have one without the other. People who just diet with their nutrition but don't tone, they'll lose all the fat, but then they're kind of like saggy, hangy. 
you want to tone at the same time. It, there's so much science to it. Cool, because my mom was doing isogenic. Stipe Miocic was doing it for a while, and you have to like fast almost. You have to like cleanse your body, and people have such a hard time doing things like this. The Dolce diet sounds like something I would have loved to do. Yeah, it's really good. He has, he has the book. You can buy the book. It has it laid out day by day by day by day. It looks like a novel, but it's your daily diet. It's not like do this for the week. It's like here's today. Here's today. Here's to, with exact measurements. It's so easy to read. But look, it's a lot of food. It is a grocery bill. It's a dedicate. It's dedicate. You got you to gotta meal prep. You, you can't just say, I think I'll try it. You got to say, I'm going, I'm going for it. Kind of like you did with bare knuckle. Right. So I, I really want to talk about this <laughs> since you're, since you're so new to it. Do you like, when you get a size up with an opponent, do you really look into it? Do you go browse in social media and see what, see what it's all about for your opponent or do you kind of leave that to the team? I do. I do a little bit of research, just enough to kind of get a feel for my opponent. Um, but I don't like to put all my eggs in that basket because you don't, yeah. I mean, you don't, they, they may not fight like the the fight you found on YouTube. They may not fight like that anymore. They might have a new trick up their sleeve. They may have learned something between then and now. Um, you know, but I do like to know, like my opponent this time, uh, what I love about her, she's a mommy of three. She's oh. a, she has a, she's a actual physician. She's a career woman, a family woman. She's like me. She's not obsessed in the gym all the time with the 20 year olds it's you know not who she is it's part of who she is like myself and so i felt like okay this is going to be a great match because we're kindred in that in that sense so yeah. I, I am excited about that you know and um but I, I i take a peek i get a feel and then i just make my plan and go about my, about my life and my plan and what i need to do and because i don't want to put too much on what i found on the internet you, you don't yeah I'll never know. So now, uh, you know, uh, well, I guess one last one before we wrap the, this one up, uh, uh, Audrey. You know, obviously, you know, you said you know uh, J January was, was the first one. It's been, it, it, you know, uh, you had some time. What what should fans expect differently? Like, obviously, you said you know I made rookie mistakes. I, I learned this. I, it was fun. What what should fans see differently in your performance this time compared to what, what we've seen earlier this year? Okay, so if you if you look at my last fight, it was very robotic. It was very stiff. Um, I didn't use a whole lot of defense, and so that's all different. I'm working with uh, Coach JB Joshua Brown at the Sweat Box in Hattiesburg. He has taught me so much about just the traditional boxing and getting my hands fast and my footwork fast and um, a lot of defense drills and, of course, offense as well. He's just um, – he has such a cool story. I told it last night. He never gave me permission to share it. I hope it's okay. But like he dun, grew dun, dun. learning how to fight on the streets because uh, so I think it was his uncles, he said, um, started like a betting ring with like the kids in the neighborhood and put the kids together. And he like literally had to fight his way up the ladder because it was that or is him or the other kid. And then he turned it into a career. He's a certified boxing coach. He um, has his own gym. He trains one-on-one -on -one in group settings. He's just amazing. And like I said last night, he speaks my love language. He works, like, he'll say, get in your stance. He'll say, pause, you know, and he'll just come around and he will just move my body just a little bit, you know, and correct me, you know, and if I get it wrong, I got to do push-ups. Uh, so, <laughs> oh, God. Or I got to start the round over. He'll start the clock over. That's I'm so bad at push-ups, like. They were doing the <laughs> challenge where you do 10 the first day or tw 10, then 20, then 30 for like a veterans or something. I tried so hard. I thought I had it in me because I used to be so athletic. If you don't do it for a while, man, you're like. If a week goes by without me doing push-ups, I'm back to square one. Um, you can never stop doing your push-ups. You just can't. But um, as far as what's going to be different this time is let's just say everything. <laughs> I like what you're saying there because nothing's ever the same from you can go watch old footage like UFC 281's coming up right and these two have fought before in the past but you don't know not only is it not kickboxing anymore but it's also you know years later these fighters have evolved so it's really hard to go off past footage you might have new tricks so it's really uh 
really interesting how much you've picked up as such a new like a uh, new part of this huge roster over at BKFC. I mean, we're really rooting for you over here. Do you have like any fight on this card that you're looking forward to actually watching? Well, really, because I just know Joey and, um, and of Houston and j didn't meet him till last night. That's the main one. Um, but other than that, like, okay, so I heard Clarissa Shields say something that I've really just taken to heart. She said she's so giving when she's not in fight camp. She said she's so giving to everyone around her, her family, you know, whoever is involved in her life. But when she gets into fight camp, she becomes, it's her one time she feels okay being selfish. And so... Um, because I do give, I give to my clients, um, people at the gym, my little kids' classes, my own four kids, because I give so much, I've taken this time to be extremely selfish, and I haven't really even studied the card, because I'm really studying what I need to study, um, meditation, mindset, um, everything I need to do. Like, right before I came on here, I was just in a really hot bath in the dark with a candle. Just and then the kids came in and just... <laughs> It was before the bath that I had to take. Oh man! <laughs> at least, uh, at least the kids aren't flooding your bathroom or burning holes in the in the couch. Uh, Audra, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on Combat Deviants. What we usually like to do at this point in the interview is hand the imaginary microphone over to you. If you have any shout outs, uh, sponsors, anything at all that you'd like to say, the floor is I now have all yours. Sponsors right now. Um, first of all, I love my people at Graham MMA and uh, the sweat box and my new coach JB, I can't praise his name enough. Uh, my sponsors are Gatwood homes here in Hattiesburg. They clear land, they do new construction. They're amazing people. They sponsor every single time they bought me my portable sauna to take with me to Nebraska to finish up my weight cut. So thank wow. you. Homes. St. Pete med spa in St. Pete, Florida owned by my absolute best friend for the past 20 uh, years. That is, that's my fountain of youth. At St. Pete Med Spa, they're wonderful um, over there. Balanced Body by Amanda Morris. She she does all my restorative yoga, stretches, and realigns my total my whole body out. Um, my massage therapist Manny at the Lotus in downtown Hattiesburg. He always tacks on an additional thirty minutes at no extra charge for me, just to give me everything I need and work me totally out. He's amazing. Um, I'm working with a really a new guy into in the business but he's really great for all your promotional needs. Uh, Reckless Promotions is what that's called. Um, he comes up with some really cool videos and ads and stuff like that. Uh, everything from outerwear, anything else. Um, and then last but not least, Kalispell Nutrition out of Montana. They found me on Instagram and have been like the sole provider of everything I've needed for this fight camp. It's been an amazing experience working with Kalispell Nutrition. And I am donating my purse to the Big Fish Foundation. Mm -hmm. And Big Fish is, um, is they make an impact against veteran suicide. So on this day, if you don't know who Big Fish Foundation is, please look them up. It's Big Fish underscore foundation on Instagram. The guy who runs it is amazing. You should Google Brian Chontosh. He is an incredible veteran himself. Um, so you guys got to check that out if you don't know who they are. So thank you for uh, letting me shout all those, those what amazing. What about your social media? Where can we find you on social media? Uh, everything's my name, Audra Cummings. On Facebook, it's Audra Cummings. Same thing on Instagram, Audra Cummings. I keep it easy peasy. There you go. Audra, thank you so much. We cannot wait for this upcoming fight, and we wish you best of skill. Thank you so much for having me, guys. This was so much fun. You guys are awesome. All right. We'll talk you to you time, soon. My friend. Have a good one. Best of thank skill. You. That was awesome, Steve. What a great interview, right? There. I already told you. She, she, she's like, like I said, we, you know, uh, I think Houston hit it home like late last week. How we, how we like to kind of dig in the people and kind of, kind of find the stories underneath the, the combat sports stuff and things of that nature. So it's always cool having people like, like Audrey. She, she literally just, you know, fell in love with combat sports and and you know became a fighter that way it wasn't like like she was just like like this is something that you done from a young age and just you know started her started making her way up in, in, and she in, loves in the it too world it's just so, combat sports just happens to do that to you right whether it's boxing it's jujitsu it's 
wrestling, whether it's pro or, 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 you know, or, or Olympic level wrestling, like, like there's just so many different ways to pull you in Muay Thai, kickboxing, every, there's just so many th different aspects of it to, f to have parts of it that, that just becomes one with what, what the human, human does. Like, it's just, there's something about, about jump right into their and knuckle and too, like, like... he was t t talking about it, like, like how, like we just get in that, that environment. We just kind of unleash the beast. Like, like with, with her, her, her team talking about, get, you know, getting getting ready for fights things of that nature it's just if you haven't been in a in a high level gym like that you haven't seen it you haven't heard it you haven't smelt it and yes there is a smell to it if, if, if you've been around enough gyms <laughs> <laughs> that's so great you know it's just weird to me that somebody would go right into bare knuckle and i was re-watching it the other night like a bunch of fights like reggie barnett's fight and i forgot like you know we we say bkfc bare knuckle but we forget it's actually bare knuckle like it's actually brutal which reminds me how do you get more brutal than bare knuckle other than slapping steve have you heard this ufc yeah, is bringing yeah, on it's, uh, slap it, it's kind of uh the, the 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 thing that's been coming out uh you know a good friend of mine uh you know fr fr friend of the program uh you know you know somebody who's been around you know fighters and management stuff like that said to me about about two months ago he's like steve He's like, I need you to keep an eye out for slap boxing championships. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, are we serious about this slap boxing championships? This is gonna be a thing. Isn't this what, what we used to, to prove that that we were we were tough dudes when we were like 15 years old, right? <laughs> slap, so you used bro. to slap box everybody. So apparently, Dana White, TNT, TBS, whatever it is, it's uh, on TBS. Uh, it's an idea, and there's gonna be an ultimate fighter type reality show with a slap boxing championship eight one hour episodes that will showcase the world's best slappers competing for championship titles across multiple weight classes and man i got my boy slap for cash who was on the logan paul the slap that changed my life that really started the whole boxing thing steve uh i would love to have him on for combat deviants very soon he's actually best friends with nick and nate diaz as well so you know when he was telling me he does slap competitions and he started showing me dude some of these guys, when they get knocked out, man, it looks bad because, listen, they're standing there like this. They hold both sides of the table, Steve, like this, and then they're getting slapped around. How do you make a reality show out of something like this? Television debut, TBS in January, eight one-hour episodes, um, like an hour long. Could you really sit there for an hour watching slaps? Or I, I would tune in for three or four, but an hour, how well do you think this is going to really do here? I don't know, man. Like it, it all. Like in reality, when you do, like, like regardless of, about building, the, building up the sport of what 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 slap boxing is is gonna gonna be, etc. So, um, yeah. Like, how do you judge? Like, how do, I think like, it's gonna be about the, like, the characters, the people you bring in. Like, the, like how do you, you know, win you know, it? Like, you just gotta get knocked gonna speak, out. It's gonna be made or break on the personalities. Of the people they bring in to to do this, not just who's the best, who's the strongest, you know, things of that nature. And they got state regulations too from uh, NSAC just last month, which really is pushing this whole thing forward. I know it's huge overseas, but are like, are you going to be watching it? Am I going to be watching? Is this going to be a thing that we're going to start covering now? Are they going to start competing? Uh, like, it's just weird, dude. Because it, it is weird. It's one of these things like you have to. It's it, like an you Instagram really thing. Scratch your head, like like like. Hey, listen, Dana is putting his name behind it. I mean, I'll watch it on like YouTube Shorts. I can't sit there for an hour though. Like, it's a little. I mean, little out like, of like I said, it really depends on like who, like like like. It's just like how how like what what made the Ultimate Fighter big that first season. It's something we talked about. That's been missing is just Chris Lieben you, you destroying had, like, those first handful seasons. They had so many stars come out of, out of those seasons, not just guys who were like veterans on the scene, but young guys who stayed with with the UFC. And 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 you know Nate Diaz leaving is one one of one of the last kind of few ones that they have from it. I mean, I, I guess Tony Ferguson was one of the earlier. I guess you know first ten show winners that that was that was in there. He's been you know he's had you know more than twenty fights in in the UFC yeah. things of that nature. So I again I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back to say it will be making or breaking not on how much money's put into it, not how much promotion it on it, but how 
well the fans connect with with the guys or girls whoever i don't, I don't know how, how how they're gonna do do that if they have any yeah. females on on if there's gonna be female slap box division however I would that's, be down for that. yeah. that's gonna work but i mean it's just gonna be uh, it's gonna be made a break of the personalities uh, of the guys that they bring on the show huge point yeah exactly and now steve what people really want to know about here and let's just jump right into it ufc 281 going down this weekend ceremony weigh-ins happened today we got a crazy main event i don't want to talk about that the one fight i'm really interested in seeing is dustin poirier going in there against michael chandler yeah, michael the number chandler one contender fight without a doubt is absolutely a number one contender fight anyone that, that wants to wants to tell me any differently you can come at me we can ha have a conversation about this oh, but he, a, anyway you know you know you know My, michael chandler is arguably uh the probably the best ufc fighter that that they've ever yanked out at a at a at a bell tour mma with yeah. that with that without a doubt and that that's even me sitting there saying that being a, a, an Eddie Alvarez stain to to the highest ump degree. Well, there's and a I, difference. We, Eddie we, Alvarez we just, played we passed it. Passed a recent anniversary of Michael Chandler and, and Eddie Alvarez won. So it, it, it's one of these things. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's it's hard for me to say that, but without a doubt, uh, you, you, the the Michael Chandler's body work speaks for itself. He, he you know, he, he is one more. I think he's probably the, the more well-rounded fighter, and that's just because he has world-class world wrestling. We are we talk about this so much when we talk about combat sports. If you have world-class wrestling, it trumps you know not having this or being inefficient at that. Now that that being said, my, Michael Chandler absolutely can throw them things. He can yeah. he can throw he can throw that's them. Justin just, he can throw them four ounce gloves j just about as anyone at 155 pounds. And then that doesn't mean that 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 Michael Chandler is going to be going to be bowling through Dustin Poirier. Dustin Poirier ha, 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 has made his oh, this mark is not in, going in this division for. Oh, you got to say, go ahead, brother. What do you got? What do you got? I, I'm I'm just telling you, it's not going to different uh, distance. Oh, without a doubt, I think I think without a doubt, uh, these two are going to get eat, get get one another within inside of a different di distance. They should send send the judges in the in the back, tell them to ha have a soda, go get yourself some popcorn, a hot dog. Whatever, we ain't gonna need you for this one. We ain't here's, gonna need you for this one. Here's my thing. I do, however, think it will go into at least the third round before we get a stoppage out of either one of them. I, I think can, I think we are going to see a classic lightweight back and forth brawl between Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler. I, I'm putting it in now. Mark it down. Fight of the night. I will put. I would. If there's there, there's a prop bet on that. Somebody go and take it. Yeah. Here, here's my thing, though, Steve. With this fight, we're used to seeing Dustin Poirier be a smarter fighter ever since the Michael Johnson fight. Before that, we would see him do the grandfather walk, get too excited, and then get caught up and knocked out. With Michael Chandler saying, it doesn't matter to me if I win a title anymore. It doesn't matter if I win or lose. What people are going to really remember me for is the entertainment aspect of this, if they're going to remember this fight. So I really don't think that Dustin the Diamond is going to be playing it safe. They're going to go in there and actually have fun. I think they've taken a little breath of fresh air, not worrying about the title anymore. Have, have you realized that in the past couple of years? People aren't really con like too concerned about the title. It's not that big of a deal to them at this stage in their careers, like Eddie, uh, like Dustin or uh, Michael Chandler. They just want to go in there and have a good time and really put on to get that 50K. I think at this point in time, like when you look at it at this at this point in time, where where you're both of these guys, you have to think. You know, I think Chandler probably has a better chance of of, 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 of obtaining the title right now. He he's probably hungrier to to obtain the title. So you say there's that perceived pressure to 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 win this fight to go to go be able to go challenge uh, the the 155 pound champion at, at the moment. Uh, do I think it would mean less pressure for Dustin? No, I think it's even more because because he he he's been so close to the title. He he's he's had that interim status and things of that nature. And just now the official able, hot sauce of the UFC too ha hasn't been able to kind of clear that, so he doesn't have a definitive championship run in him over the past few years. That would, that's a good it, statement. It, it, it's safe to say, say that that you know you know you know uh, Charles Oliveira stole that from him. Yeah. 
And he also stole that from himself with the weight, weight losing debacle and having everything. Like everything has been so unstable since the Khabib, Khabib retired oh. at 155 pounds. It is absolutely insanity. But in the promotional part, part of things, you couldn't ask for a better situation. If you're Dana White and and, and the figureheads over 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 there at, at them, you have to be be like, oh my god, I could, can't ask for a better situation. And now Eddie's going to be bringing up some some, some of the uh, some of the tweets of the weeks that that we we had found over the past. We got to give shout out to uh, to uh, the our our favorite Twitter account, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the dumb MMA tweets. Um, Let me play this oh, real oh, quick oh. before we get into. It. <laughs> All right, Steve. So you actually showed me this one here. It says people go on and on how lightweight is the best division, but this has been the most boring division in my mind the past five years. Are you out of your mind? It's better than ever. All Steve, right, what, listen, what are your thoughts? Here? Listen, these people who are making these tweets didn't go through the, the time there was no lightweight division when there was just sparing fights at 155 pounds. You didn't go through all that. You don't know what you're talking about. Talking about boring his time in the past five years when when BJ Penn was trying to rule two two divisions at the same time because there was nobody, and that's the only reason why they were trying to entertain a two 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 division champion is because there was no one for him to fight. They had to bring Jens Pulver in. Who? who I mean, no offense to Jens, he's not an uh -oh. elite level. Lightweight, nothing he's got against that Jens. One of the one of the one of the greatest great greatest, I guess you know, um, personalities in combat sports that set in the early ages is Jens Pulver. But to sit there and say this division over the, I mean, like I just said, it's been in 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 a weird state of flux since Khabib. But even before Khabib, you're sitting there telling me Conor McGregor's what run what 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 wasn't fun. We were just talking about Frankie Edgar. You think that the, the fights him, Fra Frankie Edgar, and BJ Penn had weren't amazing? We we didn't could just come through an amazing run at, at, at 105 pounds? But he's saying the last five years haven't been that exciting. I think it's even way better than it's ever been, Steve. And now we have, you know, Habib out of the picture. For a while, it's like, get stale, like the heavyweight division. And then you got Derek Lewis, Francis Ngannou come in. The lightweight division is one of my favorite divisions. Steve, what, what about you? What is that? It's got to be one of the top two there. I mean, look at that division itself. It's I mean, I think it's it, I, I, when you really think of it, it's like the, they're like the, the, the bastard stepchild of, of, of it. It, it. It's it's been a division that's kind of been overlooked. You know, you know, you, you get to a certain point with it and a lot of the guys they run they either go to 45 or they go or they go, to, they go up to 70. It's one of the. I think it's one of those tweener divisions. Like I still think that if you find another weight class, that that in between it, we're like we've we've talked about a bit in between fifty five and seventy. We've always talked about this, have we not? It's one of the th reasons why I feel some fans feel that way is because you see a lot of flux between the forty fivers and the seventy years and the hundred and the the hundred and fifty five pound lightweight guys. It, I feel that that it's not the premier weight class, but I think when you look at one hundred fifty five pound guys, it, it has to be one of the one of the top five weight classes that we talk about when we talk about combat sports, regardless if we're talking MMA or if we're talking boxing. It, do, it doesn't matter. I think they're one of the more exciting fighters in the world. And we got our the next exciting fighter. fighters in the world, we're, we're being joined by our guest this evening. There he is. Mr. Flowers, Mr. Beast Mode, appreciate the time wow. this evening. Sorry for my mistake with the, with the, with the time zones. <laughs> All good, bro. Darius, we're, we're right now talking about a very important tweet here. We're doing tweets of the week, right? And somebody had the nerve to say this here. Uh, there you go. We have people go on and on how lightweight is the best division, but this has been the most boring division in my mind in the last five years. We totally disagree with this. What are, what are your thoughts here? <laughs> Fuck, I forgot I'm going to interview. I got crazy <laughs> thoughts. 
<laughs> but um, you know what? I, I trained with Rick Lynn today. Rick Lynn is oh, he's he is ranked, he is ranked in the top ten, but he's a top ten um guy. I don't know if you guys seen the fight with Grant Dawson and Rick Glenn. Yeah, we we actually know him very well over here. He's been on okay. the show. Yeah, yeah so I'm gonna be training with him a lot more. He's a black belt. He actually tapped me a few times today. Um, he just has really good transitioning. Um, you know, when you first um, train with a, a new black belt, you know you gotta get comfortable with what they're good with. So you know, but um, before today, before I rolled with him, um, I would say that. All of those guys are ass, <laughs> which I still think they are. A lot of those dudes are well, ass. You want to be the lightweight world champion. You actually really right. want to follow a I, I style. Will be. I, I will be. I will be. I will be for sure. Because so I, I get better fast. Like my really question to you: fast. the whole Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series. Can we can we start right there, Darius? Yeah, absolutely. You had one of the craziest highlights. Coming out of Dana Way's Tuesday Night Contender Series, how are you going to top that in the UFC? Um, by being a champion, by winning fights, like um, I'm not, I don't care about that stuff, bro. I don't yeah. care. Everybody thinks I don't. Know, I don't like. I stopped martial arts for for cloud and shit. Like I'm, I'm a great martial artist, but I like, I'm like the best entrepreneur to ever live. But I need more money, so that's why I fight. But I'm I'm passionate about it as well, um, and I'm really good at it. So you know what I mean, like, it, it, you know what I'm saying. There's more reasons why I do martial arts than clout chasing. Um, yeah. Look, at, you know what I mean. I don't fight for like knockouts like that, but um, it comes with me. That's why my name is Beast Mode. You know what I'm saying. And it's absolutely crazy, man, because at one point in your career, I think you said you did like 33 fights or something like that in 24 months. Uh, your amateur career, you had 18 fights. What was the decision to go pro? I mean, you really have been taking this really seriously. That's the way to go to make sure you're ready to become pro. What was it where you decided, uh, I'm absolutely ready for this right now? Oh, your audio just cut. <laughs> Got a little technology, brother. I, I, my talent has always been raw from the beginning to now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it wasn't about being ready to go pro. It was more so having the right people around me. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, 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 and having the right people behind me. In, in in this career, and that's why I ended up with a twelve and five um, record before I got to the UFC. Because of you know, in this game, you can't do this shit alone. You know what I mean? Like um, at the higher levels, you gotta have higher level guys around you and behind you. You know what I'm saying? So um, I wasn't ready to go pro in that sense. You know what I mean? Well, I realized with you, you know, there's there's fights in your past where the judges really kind of screwed you. Yeah, yeah, well, I absolutely, like, one fight in Chicago, I unanimously beat the shit out of this kid, and um, he acted like I need him in the nuts twice, and they took a point from me, um, and that ended up being the draw because it was his hometown or whatever. Um, but I was fighting for I was fighting for decisions back then, so it, it really I can't blame anybody but myself. Like, I don't fight for decisions. Anymore, I don't fight to 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 finish a fight and decisions. But you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we'll we'll talk we'll talk about that. More. I won't. No. Well, well <laughs> you had a fight against former UFC fighter Adam Sella, right? And yeah, that's like my third one, third pro you fight. Clearly won the fight, but one judge goes 30-27 for you. The other one had it 30-27 for him. It's like, how yeah. do you see? How do two different judges see that? Like, what are they? You know what? That on? that is crazy that you say that because. That that was before the rule change, though. That was before the rule change with the ABC about how the fights were scored. But I still keep that in the back of my head about how, um, you know what I'm saying, crazy judging is. It's like you said, one judge headed all um, three rounds one way and uh, the other one headed all three rounds another way. I've never still to this day seen that. You know what I mean? 
So that was another really key factor of me not going to decision. Like, that's just, like, real-life shit right there. You know what I mean? Like, when shit like that happens, it's just like, bro, you can't leave. You really can't leave it up to the judges. That, those are eye-openers. So going into the Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, I don't mean to cut Steve off. I'm just really excited about this because when I tuned in that night, everyone was all about the 17-year-old, right? Everyone had their eyes on the seventeen-year-old kid. Shout out to that kid, man! Shout out, shout out, shout out to the to the badass seventeen-year-olds. Uh, did you get to meet him? Did you nah. think that his performance was uh, on par He's at seventeen? He's UFC ready. So, yeah. what do you do? You, do you think that your performance was better than his? Because I would say yours definitely took the show, but everyone was um, talking about him. Well, shit, I had the best. Um, because like you know, what I'm saying when I was speaking earlier, like in the sense of um, when, when you asked me a question earlier, and I was speaking in the in another sense, um, I can't really say that like my performance was better, but overall, like my interview, I feel like I've had the best interview, um, this season for sure, one of the best interviews in general, and that alone, you know, catapults me up to you know what i'm saying performance wise like you know what i mean like overall um like my performance inside of the cage was great but outside of the cage is the reason why i feel like a lot of people are even talking about me in the you know anyway he's 17 years, years old so he deserves to be talked about you know what i'm saying um but overall i feel like i have one of the best performances when you add everything into it like how i got the people in it the energy you know what I mean? Like the aggression and um, obviously a cool, different, unique finish. But like, you gotta like um, add everything up. You can't, you know what I'm saying? Just look at the finish, like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of those guys don't even speak English. Yeah. So, like, it's just like, uh, you can do the best thing in the fucking world, but you can't understand. And if you just cut it off, you can't. Nobody wants to hear translators, especially not at a fucking press conference or interview. It's like, it's too much. <laughs> Yo, you, you you just spoke on something that that no one in media ever wants to sit there and say because they don't want to sit there and and damn play you know somebody just because they're from a different part of the world or ever. But no. I definitely agree with you when it when it comes down to the sport of of, of promoting combat sports, you definitely don't want a, a translator at the press conference in the cage or anything like that. You want to be able to connect with yeah. with with the fighter, and that's what helps you guys kind of grow. Right. Well, and, and there's nothing wrong with it because everybody has their, um, what do you call it, um, born language. You know what I mean? Um, but I just feel like some people lack effort to learn English. And I feel like that's disrespect. And I feel like some people lack effort to just speak it because they can, they know it and they just choose not to. I don't know what what's about, about what that's all about, but I, I peep that a lot. I feel like people just don't speak English when they should or they could, or they don't try to learn it when they, they you know what I mean? Everybody has the opportunity. I think everyone needs to take a page out of Anderson Silva's book because he was probably the, yeah. probably the biggest Brazilian superstar the UFC's ever had, and, and he went out of his way to make sure he, he did not only the Portuguese, but he would also go and make it also make sure he had the English part down as well. I think that's why he is such a big star as he was because he was able to push that period. Exactly. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Now, Darius, now, as far as far as your fight goes, man, yeah. you know, you that that obviously you talked about guys off. Somebody said ask if the slam was illegal, which we know the answer to. But um I'm going to um ask you guys just so more people can ask questions just to um Help you guys channel. Yeah, that's no problem. So what yeah, do you guys bring it on? <laughs> was it illegal? Yeah, that's what people were were asking. What do you guys think? No, absolutely I don't, I don't, not. Listen, I don't see how anyone can sit there and say it's illegal or anything. Yeah. Well, well, Jerry, we like, it's we know it's not, not like you, you, not like your intention was like I'm gonna slam him. I'm gonna make make him break his shoulder. No, that wasn't the intention. He 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 jumped on you. How you jumped well, on him? Well, obviously, my damn. intention was to for him to let me go. But I didn't care what happened to like you know what I mean. Like I don't feel sorry for no. He don't feel sorry for me. And I, I watched all his fights. I knew his charisma and, and what he was all about. And I had some dude message me, bro, about that kid. 
saying he's a piece of shit, which he was. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't have any good energy. You know what I mean? Like, I think I, I stopped feeling sorry for, like, bad guys. You're in a sport where you can't feel sorry for it. Like, when you're in yeah, a cage, yeah. well, that you in the human moment, like, yeah, I'm not going to yeah, feel sorry. Yeah, but you still don't, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm going to make you pay for it. Yeah, but you still don't want to go out there and... and, and Hurt another man that has to go back home to his well, family. Especially but it wasn't like person. you're on like Bruce you know Marvel I mean? level where you're just trying to break his freaking. Yeah, his but it is a game up. of it's a game of Edo get eight. You know what I mean? But I like I said, I just feel I feel for the good people. You know what I mean? More so because like I said, it's still life at the end of the day. But for the people that I feel like are pieces of shit, I really don't have any remorse. I know what you mean. There, there, there's there's some amazing people in combat sports, but there's some uh, some. World class D bags and and so I think a, a lot yes. of people look forward to see, seeing uh, seeing someone turn this person light out or someone watching them take an L or some something like that. But yeah, like, it's people plotting on my downfall, bro. Like you know, everything everybody goes through personal shit. So it, you know, and there's people out there just waiting on you know negativity from from me. You know what I mean? Like it don't not, that's what I call like you know what I'm saying um, douche bags, pieces of shit, people that plots on other people's downfall like you know what i mean there's two there's there's, there's just a whole lot of that in the, in the world yeah eddie's got one so so the, uh sure since you 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 had you had a a uh i guess a, a wwe-esque finish right correct we've seen this we've seen this as part as part of our our our, our dumb tweets of the week yeah. uh uh something about MMA wouldn't exist without pro wrestling. Do you feel feel that that that's a, a legitimate thing? I think there's aspects of pro wrestling that we see in combat sports, but I don't think you one would necessarily not be there without the. Ah, uh, I can't answer that, bro. The I, reason I, I brought that up because I know that you're a huge Stone Cold Steve Austin fan. Yeah, yeah and you just really thinking about thinking. See, Gladiator shit was already. That was something, you know, that existed, you know, back in the day. Um, so I, I just had to, I would really have to see, like, when, when, when did, um, did they, which one existed first, you know, or did they coexist? Um, but I can't answer the question until I know, because I know, like, Gladi, I would consider Gladiator as a martial arts sport, would you? Yeah. Yeah. Right, so like I would have to see like were they doing any kind of? I, I think they were already doing. I, I don't think, know. I, I think it was like Greco Roman wrestling back back in those days, but it wasn't like pro wrestling like what we see, what we see today with the. What's the still WWE. the concept though? You know what I mean? Like I would just have to see which one would be first because yeah, um, you probably pro wrestling probably. I don't know. I honestly don't know which one came first. It just depends on who, which one came first because yeah, you got to really think about it. Like if wrestling was first, then that would be like. Um, where gladiator shit would derive from, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, like the the wrestling growing up, seeing those guys wrestling. I don't know. I have no idea. I, gladiator probably came before wrestling. Technique depends on when they start doing technique, bro. So I gotta ask this, man. 185 pound ultimate fighter five years ago. You wanted to try out for? Are you happy you didn't do that? Are you happy that you went with the ultimate fighter? Uh, Happy that we went with Dana White's Contender Series instead of doing something like the Ultimate Fighter. Is that something you actually really wanted to do? Oh, back in the day, one five five years ago, niggas was trash. <laughs> <laughs> I was good enough back then, believe it or not. I'm still, like, see, like I was always a raw enough talent. Like I was here wrestling. I was here, you know what I mean. And then like I don't, I wouldn't say I did bad at. 185. I just wasn't naturally like right now. My weight naturally is like closer to 175, which has never been like that in my life. But um, before it was closer to 195, 200. You know, so I, I and mentally I, I felt and I always felt good. So you know, what I mean, like I, I feel like I would have did bit did good because five years ago MMA was a whole different ball game. Got you know what I mean? Um, I would have did all right. I probably wouldn't have made it because I know some guys that would have humbled me. When it, when he when he got time to, but that's the that's the reason why my um career catapulted at the time that it did. Everything came around when it did, um, because I wasn't I wasn't ready, you know what I'm saying. But I I would have made enough noise to get in the entry, you know, and get in the beginning, you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah. I wouldn't I would have got humbled. But see now, you know what I'm saying, like everything's coming around. I'm going down to 155, and um, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah. 
like what's the whole thing you want to go two different divisions we 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 see a lot of people changing divisions i'm, like I I like what you're going changed. I don't, I'm not i'll step up at 170 and fight but right now i don't it's no it's no reason for me to um fight at 170 i can make 170 every day of the week you know what i'm saying so i'm, I'm honestly just going to try out light lightweight and um you know what I'm saying? I feel pretty confident about everything, and then if everything goes good there, then that's where we'll be at. Um, and if my body changes again like it did, then I might even freaking go down to featherweight in the future. Oh, but wow. um, right now, I, f I feel like um, lightweight is, you know, I don't know if I can do it. So obviously UFC 281 going down. We have two huge. Yeah, or nay. Hey, there you go. There you hey, go. Love there it. We go. <laughs> I sell a lot right. of that over here. <laughs> this, this is CBD. What is that? A backwoods right there? Uh, this is some CBD pre-roll. Oh, really? There you go. That's what I tell people a love lot. It. too. <laughs> you know, CBD, when's the first time you tried something like CBD? I've never tried it. Does it actually work for you? Um, but yeah, bad. I don't have anybody sponsoring me for CBD, so I don't even want to talk about it until I have Ooh, I can get you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's where the businessman is coming out of Darius. <laughs> I can get you a sponsor for that easily. Oh, uh, yeah. If you, yeah. Anybody watching and want to sponsor me, know somebody that wants to sponsor me, go ahead. I'm just like, um, just in my quiet phase right now, just, you know, just ready to uh, relax, show the world what's up, and, um, Get ready to move move forward with everything. So anybody that wants to sponsor me or know somebody that's down, get with me. Uh, we got a couple more questions here, man. I got to ask you, four fight win streak right now. Where what are you looking for in two thousand twenty three? How many times do you want to fight? At least three. At least three. So do you have anyone in sight? Is there any talks? Where where are we at right now? <coughs> Yeah, we got like a verbal agreement with um, Chris Duncan. Um, I'm not 100 percent sure, um, but it's kind of looking good. But like they're they're all my manager and Sean Shelby, the matchmakers, are all at UFC 281, obviously. So we'll hopefully find out next week. All right, if not uh, somebody else, but soon. Looking forward to that. So UFC 281, I wanted to ask you, do you have any predictions for the main <coughs> event there? Israel Adesanya versus Alex. Um, yeah, well, I think Israel's a lot better. Um, Alex is um, fairly better. Not as much as um, Israel. Not He hasn't gotten as better as... As he hasn't hasn't gained as much skill as Israel has. Um, obviously, he's been in the UFC in MMA, um, and he's faced high level grapplers, wrestlers, not the highest level wrestlers. So I know for sure in that aspect of the game, he's better. Um, I don't think he's as strong as him, but he was already a better striker than um, Alex. Israel was um, the first fight I did watch. I, th I thought he won as well. Right. Um, the second fight was close too. Second fight was close. He got knocked out, but I feel like he's the better fighter at that time. I feel like he'll be the better fighter now. Um, I feel like he's a smarter fighter, and I think he'll get the job done by a TKO or decision. Um, <coughs> if it is a TKO. It'll be early or late. Um, and if it's a decision, it's a decision. I can't say if it's going to be unanimous, but it'll be a decision or a TKO win. Also, but number one. It starts fucking grappling and sub -win. I don't think you will. Yeah, that's been like the whole thing people are talking about. Is he going to go for a double leg? or? But, you know, I, huge I fight on here. He might not wrestle. I, I, I just said he might not grapple, which means he might not pursue a finish. Well, even in kickboxing, um, Alex did a lot of clinching as well. He even got like a point taken and scolded for it. So I don't see him wrestling, though. 
you know, he's gonna definitely yeah, he's, not a, he's not a wrestler. He, There's no way. No way to to uh become a wrestler like that in, in, in three fights. Yeah. yeah. What not. about what about Izzy? Could you see Izzy trying to get him to the ground and kind of yeah, show him I just, Yeah, I can absolutely see him um pulling out um Francis and Ganu against Sir Sirio Gong. Okay. Um I can definitely see him mixing it up a little bit with some wrestling, taking the um taking his back off of some um clinches, off of some you know, some slick stuff, taking his back and just using it for time and just being a smart chap. That's the thing. He's he's not the best at anything, is he? Um, not maybe maybe striking he's the best at, but um he's he's underestimated for how smart he is. He's the smartest IQ is um probably the best in the division. That's that's why he's a champion. He's a lot smarter smaller than a lot of those guys that he fights too. We saw that in the Kelvin Gaslam fight. He was even trying to go uh for a submission at one point. But outside of the Adesanya fight, I'm sure you're excited to see Justin uh, Dustin Poirier going against Michael Chandler for that number one contender spot. You gotta tell us what your predictions are for that one. Oh uh, predictions? <coughs> Chandler gets it done by decision or um, TKO. I like how he's talking in his interviews. Um, Ch- Chandler chose money for a while in the later part of his Bellator and beginning part of his MMA, I mean, his UFC career with the way he was fighting, the style, just chose that fan side and, and, um, and he didn't choose the Bilal Muhammad side. See, what people didn't know about Bilal is he's actually really good at every fucking thing, and he can finish guys. But being smart and, and just wanting the bag and winning the fights is Bilal's main thing. You know what I, I mean? I remember watching him in Titan FC coming up. I had him on the show a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah. 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 I remember when he beat Steve Carl and everything and made it to the UFC. I'm actually going to be training with um, Steve Carl. And Bilal's my teammate, Chicago fight team. Shout out to him. But what I mean with him is he's he he didn't choose that that fan that the size of the fan he chose to win fights you know what I mean and sometimes fighters choose to go out there and get that extra fifty thousand and get that extra you know what I mean that cloud and and not really show their true size you know what I mean and I feel like Chandler is gonna come back to being a, that D one All American smart fighter because he could be a fucking champion bro like you know what I mean but um. Back to the division, I feel like the division is overrated from a really? uh, fighter's standpoint, not from you guys' standpoint, obviously. Can you explain I that a little just, bit? I, I think it's it, it, it overinflated with, with top-heavy UFC guys that probably shouldn't really <coughs> have the clout that they really have right now. They shouldn't have the standing in the division right now, right? <coughs> um, I just... I don't think uh, the top guys are as good as um, not what people think they are, but um, what uh, what uh, other fighters give other fighters outside of the UFC and some fighters in the UFC give the top fighters a lot of credit for how good they are, and they're not really that good. It comes down to small things. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think I, I think I could beat Dustin and Chandler. Actually, I know I can. That's the good mentality that you got right there. The confidence that you have. How long do you think it's going to take to face somebody in the top fifteen? Are you really trying to push for that? Because I know, like you said, you know your amateur career was long. Are you going to try to take your time, or are you going to try to really make a run here in two thousand twenty-three? That's where I'm at, trying to figure that out. Um, I, I'm just trying to do good right now. So, um, like, before I got to the UFC, I never wanted to be a UFC champion. I just wanted to get to the UFC. Now I want to be UFC champion. So I have to keep accomplishing my goals first. Like, I can't really give you a good answer on that, but I, I want to do good in my first fights first. You know what I mean? And then, because I'm young. And if I was old, yeah. I could ask you a question. 
but I'm young, so I want to just do good first. And like I said, man, I got tapped three times today by a black belt, but I know what needs to be done. That's the good thing about me. Um, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm I'm not the best in the world right now, but I, I will be. You know what I mean? So um, I, I have to approach it smart. I, I do have to approach the fight smart. I can't just go out there and, and fight Dustin. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I have to. Uh, that's why I have good managers, Jason House and everybody. So, um, man, within a couple years, though, um, I'll be the best. So uh, we just have to scale it with the timing the right way. So I got one more question oh. for you here. The tattoos that you got going on, man. You're going to get some money. Are you going to get some more tats? What's going on with the uh, tattooing? Yeah, I get tattoos that mean stuff. What? So, what what's uh, that on your chest? What does that represent? You can kind of see it here in the corner. You guys grapple? I used to train growing up, uh, play football. <coughs> I've been a journalist. <coughs> Actually, you love this. I did. <coughs> So, like, you do mixed martial arts. Me growing up, since I was a young kid, I was on radio and stuff. My first interview was actually with Stone Cold Steve Austin himself on air. So, ever since then, it kind of changed my life. So, I've always enjoyed uh, martial arts growing up and, and really following the journalist career of it. Mm -hmm. So, that's the difference, like, with me. It's like, I've been doing this my whole life where... You know, I haven't I, trained specifically. I got I got a nice little scar here from a torn bicep, but like my my kids have been been in and out of gyms, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's guys that turn their bicep in jujitsu, so that's not really an excuse. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, I want to thank you so much. There's advantages too in certain shit too, like you know, with having different de dexterity now, you know, so just give it a try. But I appreciate you guys for having me. I got one more. I got I one more for you, Darius. Yeah, no, I got, I got, I got time it. today. You know what? I, I turned out a lot of interviews. For some reason, I said yes to you guys. So, Because I'm not, Thank like you. I said, I, I'm just chilling, bro. Like, these really don't benefit me much. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I have to put, I got to put the work in to really get fans and really get sponsors, endorsements, and all that. You know what I mean? So, like, all you got the right team, team man. You you got already him and Jason House were already on your team, man. You 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 already got the first step, bro. You, exactly. And the second step is you already got got the mind step and, and and mindset to to push yourself to that next level to to get to get to get to those goals that you want. Like you said, you know, you're taking it taking it one fight. You want to do do good with this and, and see where it goes. But the fact that 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 you already have that mindset that you're going to be a world champion. It's 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 just 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 another notch until you get to it, brother. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. So your name's Beast Mode, but I was thinking about it. Why not Deflowered? You know, Darius Deflowered. I'm gonna deflower this And I I I'm gonna leave that one alone, Eddie. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Let, let him answer that one. All right, I got another one for you, Darius. That's I looked at soft, the soft, I mean, um, I would say my my name Flowers is soft, but it's too soft for MMA to be a nickname yeah like deflower like i'm i'm gonna just no, I, I, no, just leave, no, I just leave flowers that's the last time you leave you leave for the streets deflower deflower is my name like for sports like football it was even in wrestling um but for mma i feel so, it just wasn't it you know what i mean like somebody gave me the name beast mode and, and that stuck with it I, I stuck with it because it really fit me now, I looked on YouTube for, you know, I watched all the fights, all your clips, all your interviews. I came across a, a guy named Darius Flowers who does some gospel music. That's not you, is it? Yeah, that, that's me. You want to hear me sing? I'm not, I'm not even kidding. I came across it. I got it on the TV over here. No, I it, think it's a few Darius Flowers out there. There's actually a football player as well, Darius Flowers. New Jersey, yeah. And you know, he's you know, as soon as, he's, as soon as the internet started, I typed up Darius Flowers. I've been looking up to see who has my name. But where's your Twitter account? I, I see there's no Twitter account. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. How you didn't find it? I found it. You found well on Tapology. What is it? What is it? At? All right, because Tapology had it. I gotta get hold of Nolan. I got to get a hold of Nolan King to, to change that for you because 
the one that they had on there it didn't have the Twitter account going for you. Nope. Only one I found was the Y'all football. Y'all slacking. Y'all slacking. Yeah. So man, how long have you guys been doing this? My whole my whole life. I've been doing this since I was about seven years old. You guys uh, own Belly Up too? No. Uh, be- belly Up is um is mm. is Mike and Mike Mike Brown and and uh, and Blaine Napier. They're 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 guys from out in Ohio. I, I'm I'm from I'm from That's Philadelphia, right. and he's from up there in like the Connecticut New Haven, area, Connecticut, by New York. So you yeah, I've been do doing this for like eight years. You do you kind of do your podcast through that um, production? Yeah, right. through I, Belly I, Up. No, I mean, I didn't have to. I chose to chose to link up with. Right, right. Up. I know, no, I know. Obviously not. Like, yeah, I do. It works out good. You know what I'm saying? Partnership. It's a good idea. Yeah. Like I have my own podcast, Pure Evil MMA, and I got a bunch of uh, nominations the last couple of years. The top forty, like if you Google Pure Evil MMA, it's top forty podcast. Uh, along I mean, the main with, like, reason I, I linked up with Belly is is because I also wanted wanted a a a a, a well developed uh, media outlet that also covered all all kinds of other sports because I all you know I also want to. As much as I, I love combat sports, I also love. I want to want to cover football. I want to co- cover baseball. I want. I don't want to just leave myself to cover just just MMA, just combat sports. You know. Mm-hmm. So Darius, before we let you go here, I gotta ask, man. No kids, no wife, no girlfriend. What's this? Two kids. I do have two daughters. You got two daughters. They, they are ready for what's about to go down. Bring them to the UFC event for your first fight, yeah. or no? You're not gonna. Uh, for my first one, I don't know. For my, I don't know. For my first one, you know the UFC man, they don't pay for. They pay for two flights, and then you gotta pay for your own corner, and you know what I mean. So, shit, like I'm, I'm waiting for a fight now. This is my job. This is full time. So, you know what I mean. Like, just, just starting out now. Not, the, not the first one. They can, they can watch it. So where are you gonna be watching the fights tomorrow night? You gonna watch it with the team, or what do you got going on? Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, you 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 like going to places where there's actually well, no, nah, nah, they, they wasn't showing it. Me and my girl gonna go to Buffalo Wild Wings though. Yeah, because they show the pay per views all the time. Usually when I go there, it's crazy. People are screaming this and that. You don't get annoyed about any of that. Uh, I haven't been since like Floyd Fault. Um. A Hispanic guy, can't think of his name, but it was crazy. But um, no, nah, I I be chilling, bro. I'm always I'm always chilling. All right, we we totally appreciate you joining us here on Combat Deviants, Darius. I we got to get you back on, and uh, man, it's absolutely crazy how life can change in just a second. Are you feeling that? Last question. Are you feeling the change, or what does it really feel like right now? Does it seem unreal? How does how does no, nah, it seems. Oh, it, it just seems like, I, like I said before, bro. Like it's supposed supposed to happen. Everything's coming around time that was supposed to happen. Um, like you know, with me, bro, growing up and all the stuff that I've been through. Um, you get numb to the to the to the wins and the losses, you know. So it's like it's not like I'm not excited, uh, you know what I mean? But I, I'm feel like I'm supposed to be here. Uh, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm in the right Everything's happening like it should be. You know what I mean? That's the way it's got to go, man. Because a lot of people do get overwhelmed when something like this happens. I'm sure the 17-year-old is. And uh, we can't wait to see you inside. He might not do, though, know. bro. <laughs> he, might have, he, he, he might have that, many, uh, that much time on the mat, that much time training you never really know bro you know just because he's 17 yeah, so them dogs out here that's 17 bro that's hungry like i said it's about who yeah. you got around you to, for real when, so with, when you at the highest level so right now where where are you at you said you're you're training I where at, yeah i live in iowa so i train in mason city um phf karate um Chiron crossfit and the local ymca but I cross train. Um, my primary primary gym is actually Chicago Fight Team. I'm from Chicago, but okay. I, I I go there like every other week, especially when I got fight camps. I'm definitely there for every other week for like half the week. 
Um, but I just started linking up with Rick Glenn in Des Moines. Um, and I'm going to be doing that a lot often, um, like a couple times a week, every every week. Yeah, man, we got to get Rick Glenn back on here, Steve. That's a great, uh, great yeah, old friend of ours. Shout out to Rick Glenn, man. Um, Ricky Gladiator, man. Yeah, the Gladiator for sure, bro. I'm looking forward to getting more work with him. Um, we just rode today a bunch of rounds, probably like eight rounds. With Rick Glenn. Darius, we're going to let you rest for the rest of the night. We really hope to get you back on Combat Deviants in the future, coming up to your upcoming UFC fight. What we usually like to do at this point in the interview is hand the imaginary microphone over to you. If you have any shout-outs, sponsors, anything at all, the floor is now all yours. Yeah. Um, Shout-out to everybody, bro, that's helped me get to where I'm at. Um, my coach... Johnny Martin or Roberto Ramirez. I always got to shout those guys out. Anybody that I've trained with um, or that's helped me train, uh, shout out to God, Jesus Christ. And I never give myself credit, so shout out to me. You know, God keep, keep, keep keeping me in the right mindset and giving me a good mindset to stay consistent and disciplined. So shout out to myself. Shout out to the UFC. Shout out to you guys. But other than that, you guys have a good night. Thank you for having me on. God bless, Darius. We'll talk to you Darius. soon. Hey, you, you enjoy your evening, my friend. You too. Have a good that was right, awesome. Man. That was UFC sure. lightweight fighter. This Not middleweight, sure, dog. Darius Beast Mode Flowers. Awesome, awesome uh, self-belief in, in, in oneself that, the, that this guy has. Really looking forward to, to when he makes his debut. Obviously, uh, you know, he, he you know, be, be coming, coming from, you know, like, like you said, dude, he, he has so much experience that, you know, uh, you know, you know, f from his amateur career, um, you know, yeah, you know, 17, you know, the, the fact that, that, that the work that he's put it in that we're like, dude, you know, you know, he's talking about Steve and Carl, Ricky Glenn, for me and you are just sitting oh, there like, you know, yeah. is this dude like, like, like dropping out pages of, of like five years ago, stuff that, 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 you know, guys that we used to talk to, I was like, what is going on here? <laughs> remember Rick Glenn sent his shirts at one point, remember? I, had, I, saw, I did it still in my dresser. <laughs> That's so it's crazy, still in my dresser, man. Dude. Dude, we interviewed. Have to hit him back up. Tell him I'm gonna send it back to him to sign and put it put it up on the wall or something, dude. Dude, back in the day, we interviewed Kobe Covington. Uh, dude, Kobe so before he before he became came to the to the teenage dirtbag. Yeah, before he was even in the UFC video game. I remember when you, you were talking to him about yeah, it. Yeah, we were pissed. like, how the hell are you not in this game, dude? He was so like, pissed, dude. Yeah, we've done a lot. Is that any UFC fighter unless you you're just signed? It's not in the game. If yeah. you're on the roster, you should be in the game. All 500 no of them. about that. <laughs> yeah, man. And what we're still great... having fighters that sit there like, oh, I'm finally in the game. Meanwhile, they've had five fights in the UFC. How is that even a freaking thing? <laughs> Bro, I still got this game right here, dude. Fucking oh, UFC Undisputed. Ah, oh, the one for us on the cover, the first one. Oh, man. Bro, you know who's on this? Uh... I think Houston Alexander's in here. Kimbo, James McSweeney's in here. Uh, I, I even think uh, who were we just talking about a, a couple minutes ago that we have a tweet of? Oh, Lavar. Lavar Johnson. Uh, Steve, what is what is this right here? This is Lavar Johnson. Uh, apparently, uh, 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 Dustin his uh, his uh, call out came off, and he he he's ca calling out the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, for when they were finally going to dance. This is a video of his last, uh, I think, Valor, uh, Valor uh, bare knuckle fight. Oh, against my old co-host? Is that what this video is? I, th I think so. Against James? Whew. I think it's the vet, his la I think that's a, a Lavar's last fight. That's right out of jail, Lavar. Right out of jail, comes in, fights my old co-host, knocked him out, and James. He said it was one of the hardest hits he's ever gotten. James uh, has never been knocked out before. I don't think uh, on that. Uh, we got and a couple yeah, other. You got to bring that one back up. Pull that one back up. Man. All right, here, Steve. What is what does this one say right here? I we mean, got basically like, yeah, we, we we talk about goats and we talk about legacies and we talk about everything like this, dude. 
Like, 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 has the has Volk not does doesn't get no love? We're we're talking about guys not you know not not giving the like like how do people not talk about Alexander Volkanov more? The guy is putting his twenty two fight win streak on. He's what twelve and zero in the in, in the UFC now, and, and he's going for that 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 infamous you know d- uh, double double champ, bro. You Didn't know, he come from Bellator? Wasn't he the you know, Bellator you know, champ? That, too? That's insanity because you know you see a lot of guys. As as uh, Darius was alluding to, to, guys just going in there for paychecks, and like a guy's not going in there to test themselves to see if they they are the best in the world. Well, Volk's throwing all that to the wind, and he's saying, you know what? I'm putting my my win streak on the line. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go up a weight class. I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge for the title off a guy that I don't really think a whole lot of people want to fight. Absolutely insane. It's it's so weird to be on a twelve fight winning streak. Like, you know, back in the day when we had. Habib on the win streak, Tony Ferguson on the win streak, Max Holloway on a win streak. Everyone was talking about it. No one here is talking about it. And y'all Volk. all jinxed every single one of them. Yeah, every you single did. one of y'all jinxed them. Max Holloway is not even the same shadow of the main that he was before. So hard to <laughs> see. Freaking Tony Ferguson. Yeah, let's talk about Tony Ferguson. What it was since since that what he's been 0 and, not, 0 and 5 since then. So sad. So I mean it's rough, man. It's rough. When what about Jose like, Aldo, Steve? What do we, what do we, what do we got here? Uh, the fact man, people no, don't no, like no, Jose no, Aldo. You know, uh, uh, another one of these 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 dumb tweets. Shout out again to uh, MMA dumb tweets again for 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 the stuff and and all the stuff that that our our, our fellow uh, tweets uh, put out there. But uh, you know, basically just insinuating that Aldo just had a run at the wrong time and that you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he basically wouldn't be able to do anything in the featherweight division right now. You 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 really feel that way, man? You feel the same way that this fan does? I I know I know you're you're the you're you're the Aldo guy of, of the group here. So like like I the, the state. The, Let the me read it for him because I, I mean I feel like you could tell you could tell the story of the UFC without without telling a, a, a bit about Jose Aldo. Uh, you know, I are you know, oh. seen that from from my, my my level where he was on my my Brazilian goat list for or yeah. or or Mount Rushmore, however you wanted to to put that. So um, I could really care less, Eddie. Eddie, to throw it in there, say, say defend your boy, man. Because so let me read I'm this for the audio <laughs> for the audio listeners. Uh, we got a tweet here that Steve sent me. It says, "A fact people don't like Jose Aldo had a good run." At a bad time in the UFC, if he fought now in the featherweight division, he would have got nowhere. I totally disagree with this, man. You know, even though Jose Aldo is my age, 34, you think about all the wars he went in. Go back to the WEC era. People are forgetting about the runs that he went in back then. Look at the Cub Swanson fight with the flying knee. And I think for seven seconds, I think it lasted. You know, Jose Aldo was a man of a different breed back then and this is a kid that came from a poor family the only reason he started training steve was because he was just mopping up a gym he was paying for the gym by just cleaning it up and then he falls into this he was on top of the fucking world steve until conor mcgregor's 13 second knockout that goes into the next one i sent you what's this next one here is this the biggest fluke in mma history how, there's no such thing as a fluke. I totally disagree. There's no such thing as a fluke. The way that happened, dude, I, I still can't believe it. The whole lead up well, to I mean, it. Well, doesn't notice off, that, that Connor Mendes gets fight. absolutely cracked going in for that. Yeah, the same Everyone time. forgets about. He, like, all right, it's a fluke. He took one right on the chin just so he could crack him. He was practicing that same move backstage, too. There's videos of it. It's absolutely he, insane. He, he got he had to so take a shot to that. give a shot, but he... He had had the supreme confidence in his speed and skill that he would land his cleaner, harder, and flusher. It's precision time. time. His, <laughs> what, his what gamble is. paid off, and that's what it is. So the half the time, it, it, what it is, is these is the, is is these fighters are taking an absolute gamble that can put them in a really, really, really bad position. Well, with this and fight, sometimes it works out spectacularly for them, and sometimes it works out really, really bad. Connor got so into Jose Aldo's head. Remember leading up to it. And then, you know, Connor McGregor versus Chad Mendez before the Aldo fight, that whole thing 
one of my favorite Conor McGregor I think that's comeback. Kind of what man. made Conor what he is today is is the build up to that run. I agree, dude. I like, agree. He, like, 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 I don't think Conor McGregor would be as well renowned as he is now, as if he didn't have the run that he did and how everything played out for him. Do I think he's he's a bit overrated by the the vast majority of the public? Absolutely. No, don't say that, man. Look, yes, he's he, not. I, I, tell me how he's not. He's overrated. He's on the same level as Ronda Rousey. Tell me I'm wrong. You're so tell wrong me I'm with wrong. that. You're so wrong with that. How yeah, McGregor decided to start thing. taking chances. It is the well, same thing. The only they reason they both got hyped up by, by the big train, and as soon as they found somebody and were immediately on their level, what happened? They folded. Well, Connor went outside and of his level. The worst part is, is is Dustin Poirier wasn't on his level at that point in time, and what happened? Dustin not only passed him, not only got well, to, he caught to his level, he surpassed him where Connor can't even fight him. Connor didn't care about the rematch, though. He's at the point in his career; he, it doesn't seem like the same Connor. You can't take away Connor McGregor's come up there, running through the he UFC was with a Marcus different Brimley. animal. It was because of his mindset. Yeah. Uh, you nailed but it with I that one. I still think Nate Diaz stole that from him. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, bro. And that was and the beginning. Poor RDA. Of the you can't. Sit, he's not that same dude. He was originally supposed to fight RDA. RDA pulls out with a toe injury, and then Nate steps in. But also, Connor took chance by going up a weight class, which I totally loved. And then he fucks I, up by listen, going to box. Listen, I wouldn't have done the UFC no favors. RDA was an easy fight for him. I mean, in, in his mind, in his mind. I mean, Rafael Desanis is not an easy fight for anyone in 155 fans. Let's, let's, let's That's Cowboy, serious. right? That's Cowboy. Yeah, man. Like, look, look, Desanis, he's another one of these guys that's just un underrated, like really high-level gra grappling, wrestling, but just for the longest time could not get that signature win. And, like, that's one of the things that Darius was talking about, like people clout chasing in MMA. That's what he's talking about is, is trying – Cloud chasing, but it's for something for your career. It's you need a you need a highlight real win, a signature win. Like and that's the, some of the things that we talk about. And I think that's what built up Rhonda and 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 Connor so so eloquently is because they had so many signature wins yeah. in a matter of, of, of a year. Yeah, that's true. Like, like I mean, dude, Rhonda Rousey's her highlight reels, like like, like, it, granted, it, it, it's the better part of a, a, a forty-five seconds long, but it's forty-five seconds long of of fifteen fights. And it's crazy too, man. There's no one out there that made me as excited for a fight when Ronda would come out. I don't give a damn. But that's what I'm days, saying. Man. Like they, but but there was something special. The there, problem though. that the UFC also created is they didn't build other stars all as they were. Like yes, you want to make, you wanna make oh, this star go as high up as you you can get get the most juice out of that thing before it falls back down. Like Sage North. But the Cup. problem is you're Sage supposed Green to Green. build up these other ones, so when the star falls, you have something to catch. Everyone got so mad about it because the UFC was doing that, Steve. They're forgetting about everyone else. They felt really betrayed. Now we got Dustin the uh, Diamond with his hot sauce being the official hot sauce. They're giving them more love. I would say they're not really building up stars that are nobodies like Sage Northcutt did great job in his first couple of fights. Paige Van Zant. I really think Paige Van Zant was a great fighter, bro. The the kick the can kick where she beat Beck uh Beck Rawlings, man. Uh the Fleece Harry. Oh, here's fight. the other thing. Like I think her, like her and Felice Herring were kind of, Felice Herring was like three levels above her. And I thought with the big thing was is when they when Paige had finally got there. I think she had the fight with Felice in New Jersey, and she won that unanimous decision. They felt like they were going to fast track Paige at that at that point in time. It was like, all right, they built like they, they all kind of felt like Felice was going to be the girl that they put into that spot. But it just for whatever happened, like Felice Heron has had the worst, like probably one of one of the more well rounded strikers. Probably I think she's only like like a blue belt in in, in jiu jitsu. But, like, I just kind of felt like she had that thing that everyone kind of felt like she was going to make it. She was, she was, you know, one of those OG girls from 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 the, the original reality show and everything like that. And then it just, it never, every time she'd get those big fights, it, 
bad, like bad decision loss, a bad decision. Like she just had, she would just ha have bad performances at the worst possible times, and that's what eventually led her to, you know, not being in the UFC. Now, uh, you know, I, you know, you know. What about Yolanda? That thing, and then I think, ironically, she immediately teeters out of it. Yeah. Yep. It, it's so, it's so weird looking back at some of these potential stars and then what happens to them. Well, but then you look saying you should never kind of do it that the way that they do it, because this is what you end up with. Like you're, you're not the WWE. You can't do it. You can't that write way. it. Yeah. You can't, you can't write. You can't script. do it that way. You have to build them all up as they, as they are all improving together and deserve it. That's when you do, you don't just sit there. Okay. We're going to push this. Oh, well, wait, no, you're not ready. Oh, oh, wait, no, you're not. No, you can't fucking do that. Dude. That's not how fucking promoting works. This is yes, why I think promotion of running. You have to put fun fight. You have to build them. That's not just their job. It's your job too. This is why I think Habib retired at a good time, man. And it really sealed Why? his legacy. Khabib, Khabib retired because he could. It was just a matter of time before someone flunked him out. That's what. That's what I'm saying. He not just he that, his himself. body, dude. People, like, how many times did he blow out his knee, dude? How many? Well, times? He had that two year layoff. Yeah. Come on, dude. Like, you don't understand how hard that is. And then when you start to get older, being able to re like that was one of the things I think is uh, what makes Audrey is so amazing. Is that is that when you do it at that age, old. it's really hard for your body to recover. And then once you've already accumulated a couple of these injuries and it's just, it's not the same. I don't care what you are. I don't care what doctor you are. I don't care, you know, where, 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 where daddy Dana sent, sent you for, for your knee surgery for whatever. Dude. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like you're never going to be better than you were before. I don't care. I don't, especially when you get to a certain age and can had multiple injuries on, on the lower half of his body. And, and what was his thing? Oh, he's, 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 he's nobody he's, ever called him a one trick pony. Like they called Rhonda though. But that's because he had, dude, he had a, he had a gas tank that was a quit. He could take a punch. Like there was, yeah, and, he would trade, he would that, that. and I'm not sitting there saying like Rhonda wasn't a, like Rhonda's thing is that her grappling was so far of ahead of and anyone else but and then the she started thing thinking was is that, is that she probably shouldn't have been fighting at 135 pounds she probably should have been a natural flyweight right and yeah. then you couple that with with the girls that she was fighting when she wanted to lost the title okay holly home liz carmuz she is, is holly home and that natural pain and weight no she's fighting he was fighting that pain and maybe that's that's because of the division the, the usc <sighs> had Let's go. Hey, uh, to go to Amanda Nunez, is she, is she a natural band and weight? Oh, no. No, no, no way. She's definitely not. Okay. No way. So, that being said, those are the two women who, who absolutely obliterated Ronda and ran her out of the sport, right? Bigger girls really fucking who, have, who have what? Because everyone have wanted the cyborg fight. Ass, grapp grappling and or striking, right? You make a really good Amanda point. Amanda has there. both. Amanda has, has the, is the rare one who has both, right? Yeah, but, great point. You, you know, when you look at what what Holly Holly was, she's <sighs> bigger, longer. So when Ronda's trying to do her judo, it doesn't, it didn't really translate real well to be able to get. I mean, not the center say it's impossible, and she hadn't done it to taller girls. It's just the, that Holly's style made it impossible, and Ronda Holly was, was ranked really number great, nine at the shooting, time, for, shooting at air, man. Yeah. Holly was ranked number nine. Ronda just came off that Holly amazing that win. Long, Holly deserved that fight long ago, but I think what 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 had happened was Ronda was getting burnt out at that point in time, and I think that she just got to the point where she'd sold into the persona to the point where it's just like if I win, I lose, whatever, I'm done. And then Hollywood, yeah, I still I, want. It her wasn't to come just back Hollywood and things of that nature. Like she, she wanted to be the ability to kind of control Travis. Travis fucked it all up. I'm telling you right now, Travis, Travis is fault. Travis Brown. He's not in the UFC anymore, is he? No, he's been gone. He's been gone for a minute, yeah. right? Michelle Waterson. Uh, she's still in the UFC, apparently. Michelle Waterson. I haven't seen her fight in, in so long, bro. Nah, I just see her TikTok. She's funny as hell, yo. <laughs> yeah, we you interviewed her. I remember I was on a run and I ran home to call into your show to, to just to talk to her, bro. Yeah. Back in the day. Well, that's I, I that's when you. when I went to Invicta when I had that whole crazy thing with the plane and everything like that. What? What do you mean? 
I well, no, I ran in her at the, at the Wayne's and Evicta. That's how I had I, I had her number. I just got kind of. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah, but, man, that's another one that should have had the atom weight division. But Yoana Young Jack officially out of the uh, division now as a retired. She wanted to come back. I think this was the smartest. I, I, yeah, for I did see something about that. How she feels like she should do one more. That it was rushed. That you know, not just for her, but for us, we couldn't say our goodbyes. Like. We're just talking about how we're getting to say our goodbyes to Frankie Edgar tomorrow night. We didn't yeah. really get to say it to to, to Joanna. A lot, a lot of times, a lot of these fighters, like like she's one of the ones that really just did it on a whim and and, and is sticking with it. Like, like a lot of times, like you know, fighters like like this is the last one I'm playing in this one. Like when when Luke when Luke Rockhold w- was done, we already knew he was done when his contract was up. Yeah, he, he, he you know. I don't think we're going to see Luke Rockhold fighting for any other MMA promotion anytime soon. No way. You know, even – it's so sad, man, when you, uh, this is what when I'm you don't get the proper to buy as a legend. It's a sport that is, that is gnarly and nasty, and we don't all – it's it's not always this bright, shiny thing that, that the promoters make it out to be. There's dark parts of it. There's evil parts of it. We, you know, we we've discussed about the uh, things of, of the, that nature over the past month. Anyone who's been paying attention to anything that we're doing here here at the air of the program, you know, and Trisha Morrison got even more evidence in the, in the mail over the last week. She's tagging us as we're all as we're on air here tonight. So so. Well, like, I'm I'm working on actually releasing like a documentary of our. Uh, yeah, well, but I, I uploaded we the got a, We had a lot of stuff. You know, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to see, seeing what you edited with that. But dude, we're already, we're already at the two hour mark. Yeah, that's, 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 that's your about it. Oh, on this one for tonight, my friend. That was a great fucking episode, Steve. Tomorrow I will be live tweeting for UFC 281, guys. I cannot Make wait sure you're for checking tomorrow. Eddie out, folks. Make sure you're uh, checking Eddie out. At, at X Evil, too good to miss. Too X good to miss. Evil Eddie X. Follow me there and follow Combat Deviants at Combat Deviants on all social media platforms. We'll be getting more highlights up and we're going to be starting to air our highlights at the end of every month. The best parts of every interview. So you guys can look forward to that. And you got to go over to Combat Deviants on YouTube. Not just subscribe, but hit that notification bell because apparently YouTube uh, subscription button means nothing anymore to, to them. You have to literally click that notification bell. With that being said, Steve... Uh, great episode tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you guys uh, this weekend because we might have some announcements yeah, coming we up got here. Some fun stuff coming on. We got some fun stuff in the works. I'm where I like. Listen, I, I'm always working on some stuff that I've kind of uh, inadvertently mentioned it in a way in the Darius interview. You know, we're working on some more things outside of just combat sports here uh, with Combat Deviants with Belly Up Sports. So, guys, make sure you. You like subscribe, you know a- a- everything that's belly up sports and everything that's combat deviants. R- regardless of your Facebook, YouTube, YouTube uh, you know, you know, IG, you know, w- whatever your your poison is make, uh, for for your social media consumption. Make sure you you guys are showing us some love. I got some fun stuff that we're working on, both gives a- giveaway wise, content wise. We're we're gonna do some do, do some fun stuff. Hopefully, we can. Uh, add on to some other things that i'm doing with some of the other stuff that we're doing and you know make it all all work without it but uh other than that this is uh this is another another fun episode of the combat deviants i'm steve i'm ready white knuckles till the end next week folks peace out